Hey everyone, it's Bond here for Dr. Pennsylvania. I just wanted to share a quick story about a trip me and my family took back in the fall and something I learned along the way and I think it'll be a fun little story that some of you might be able to relate to and learn something from. So like I said, back in the fall, me and my family went up to Potter County and ran a cabin. And if you've never been to Potter County, it's an absolutely gorgeous part of North Central PA. It's a very unique up there. The uh, topography is really kind of dramatic. Everything is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And it's just a really beautiful, serene place to be. So if you've never been up there, do yourself a favor, take a trip to Potter County at some point. So whenever we were up there, me and my brother were really excited to get some fishing in, some fly fishing in, but unfortunately the water levels pretty much everywhere were too low, so there really wasn't anywhere we could fish safely. So as a result, we still had a really good time though, got a lot of hiking in, and uh, just really just chilled out. We went to uh, Cherry Springs, which is like supposedly one of the darkest skied areas in the state or eastern seaboard uh so you got to see like the got to see like the milky way really clearly and everything just it just it's a really wonderful place but on one of those days me and my brother went down to cinema honing state park which is in neighboring cameron county we had never been there and so like any state park we were excited to, to check it out uh first we stopped at a really nice wildlife center which i guess is only a few years old we had some really cool displays had a lot of really awesome history on the area learned a lot just from looking around there for a while and it was really nice uh did a lot of driving around cinema honing state park which is basically this valley that runs through uh, these mountains uh, and follows the first fork of the Cinema Honing uh, Creek. It was really gorgeous, like really, really nice park, very well maintained. And this is last year, so it's during COVID, obviously. Everything was so spread out that even though there were other people around, there was never a point where you were anywhere near any other any other folks. So it was a nice, it was a nice safe trip in that sense. But so me and my brother did get a little bit of fly fishing done at this reservoir that was at the bottom of the creek. Caught a, caught a few perch. It was a good time. It was just nice to be out. And honestly, again, in that, I can't overstate how beautiful it is up there. We could have caught anything all day and it would have been it would have been a win. But then whenever we were leaving, we decided to go to the actual dam that this reservoir, this cr that creates this reservoir. So we got to the top of it. There was a little parking area and there was like this like big like pump house that was like way above ground and everything. And it was just kind of weird looking. So we're like, oh, let's go see what this is. And we ended up walking out on the actual dam itself. And as we're standing there looking at this beautiful valley with this gorgeous reservoir, just kind of taking it all in, uh, we noticed that there's an overflow area on the left-hand side. And this overflow area seems to be just guesstimating like a hundred feet above where the current water level is. And me and my brother start looking at this and we're like, what in the world? Why would they build that like that? Cause like, there's like, we're like, there's no way the water would ever get that high. Cause this entire valley would just be flooded and just, it would be insane. There's like no way that, it, that the water would ever get to that level. But we're not engineers, <laughs> we're not structural engineers. So we're like, why in the world would they build it that way? And we just like couldn't, we, we kind of couldn't really wrap our heads around it. And we stood there for a while looking at it and kind of thinking about it and just took in the scenery some more and everything and went over to the to the pump house and it was just like this cool old structure and left, you know, for, uh, for the day. But I couldn't get out of my head how much of a difference there was between the water level and the overflow for this reservoir. Because every other overflow I've seen, because there's a... A relatively small reservoir but there's one near my house and it's maybe maybe 10 feet above the water level you look at the one that's up at moraine at muddy muddy creek and it's it can't be more than 15 or 20 feet at, the, at, at max it's probably less than that so it just didn't really make any sense to me but again i'm like there has to be a reason why this was built this way and me being as curious as i am i wanted to find out why so what I did was I ended up emailing someone randomly. I just like emailed the Cinema Hoding State Park, like I think just like customer service inbox or whatever. Didn't really, we didn't really expect even an answer because I was like, you know, these people are probably busy. And I basically said, hey, I have a, this little podcast and had a really great time at your park. It was gorgeous, but had this one question and I relayed like 
there's such a huge disparity between the, those two water levels. Why in the world was it built like that? Because I'm again, I'm like, there has to be a good reason. So I end up a few days later, get an email back from this woman, Kim, who works at Cinema Honing State Park, who gave me a ton of information and answered my question, uh, which was super cool of her. And it was really nice to see someone taking the time out of what I'm sure is a very busy day to answer a simple question for someone like me. So what I wanted to do was give you a little bit of history on the park and the dam real quick, some statistics, and then I will give you her answer to my question about why the world is this overflow so much higher than the general water level. A little bit of history, like I said, the original inhabitants of the area were Native Americans who had a word that cinema honing is derived from. I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I'm just going to I'm just going to butcher it, but it means stony, stony lick. Now, the first Europeans to enter the valley were likely fur trappers who would have been there, you know, in the first big push west. Then, as we all know, the in the 1800s, there was the big logging boom in north central, north central Pennsylvania. And in this industry that targeted the old growth pine and hemlock forests in the area. Then in the 1850s, there was a railroad built uh, that went along the creek that came up from the Susquehanna the whole way up. And uh, this was the Goodyear Brothers Railroad constructed at the turn of the 20th century, which was then part of the Cinema Honing Valley Railroad System and later became part of the Buffalo and Susquehanna Railroads, which now are the Baltimore and Ohio. So by the turn of the century, most of the timber had been harvested from the area, as happened everywhere else. So this huge expanse of once once forested hillsides was basically bare and, as a result, subject to... Uh, awful erosion and wildfires. So at this point, the Department of Forests and Waters, which was the precursor to the DCNR, purchased this whole area basically for state forest land. Then in 1933, we have our good friends in the Civilian Cons Conservation Corps setting up Camp Lushba in the Brooks Run area of the, of the park. And they start doing their, kind of doing their thing that they do in a lot of parks around the state at the same time. In 1955, the Commonwealth constructed the George B. Stevenson Dam on the first fork of the Cinnamon Creek, creating this reservoir. Now, it was also this was also built as part of a number of other reservoirs. You have the Alvin R. Bush, which is over at Kettle Creek State Park, which is also gorgeous. You have the Kerwinsville Reservoir, and then the Foster Joseph Sayers Reservoir, which is over at Bald Eagle State Park. Between the four of these... It covers a drainage area of 1,163 square miles, which is a huge area. Now, the park then itself finally opened in 1958 to the public. The park has picnic areas, and most of it is like, you know, fishing, hiking, camping. And there is the, uh, like I said, this new wildlife center that's really, really nice. Now, for some statistics about the dam itself, it's considered what's called a rolled earth fill structure, and it is 1,918 feet long. It has a height of 166 feet. The top width is 30 feet. That's where me and my brother were walking along. And then the base width is 940 feet. Then there is a 16-foot diameter reinforced concrete tunnel that carries water flow from the reservoir to the creek at the bottom. The What, what I thought was a pump house is actually is actually a control tower. And that sits at 200 and 211 feet above ground. And that operates two 37-ton sluice gates and operates the rest of the equipment for the, the dam itself. Now, the reservoir pool is maintained at a normal elevation of 921 feet above sea level. So that's like how they measure it, I guess, is not like how deep it is or where it is in relation to things, but how far above sea level. So the reservoir has a flood storage capacity of 75,800 acre feet, which equivalent, which is equivalent to just about 25 billion gallons of water. It would have a surface area of 1,470 acres and, a, and have a length of eight miles at this point. The flood control storage of the rev reservoir, again with this 25 billion uh, gallons, would be equal to 5.85 inches of runoff from the 243 square mile drainage area above the dam. So that's just a little background on what the park is like, what the dam's like, and to give you an idea of, again, it'd be great if you could stand there and see this, how I saw it, but give you an idea of kind of what we're, we're dealing with here. 
So here is a, an abridged version of what Kim sent me whenever I asked these questions. So the huge space between the normal water level and the spillway often causes park visitors to ask questions. The dam was not designed to be full. The George B. Stevenson Dam is a flood control dam. The purpose of the dam is to slow or stop the flow of the first fork of the Cinnamon Creek at the point at this point and hold back water in the reservoir during high water events that have potential to cause flooding downstream. By slowing or stopping the amount of water and tributaries at the first fork of Cinnamon Creek that feed into the west branch of the Susquehanna, the Commonwealth is able to prevent flood damage in downstream areas like Lock Haven, Williamsport, Sunbury, and even Harrisburg, saving millions of dollars a year. So the normal pool of elevation is 920 feet, like I said. The crest elevation is 1,506 feet above sea level. The emergency spillway is 105 feet above the normal pool. That's that overflow area I was talking about, actually called an emergency spillway. So that's 105 feet above the normal pool. The crest elevation is the maximum amount of water the reservoir can hold, which is another 30 feet above that, or 1,065 feet above sea level at the level of that walkway, that 30 foot wide walkway that me and my brother were on. If the water would reach the crest elevation, the lake would be, like I said earlier, eight miles long, 1,470 acres in surface area and hold almost 25 billion gallons of water. The steep topography and rural location of the dam in Cameron County allows the reservoir to hold a maximum amount of water while causing the least amount of impact to the citizens in the area. Because like I said, not a whole lot up there. So the George B. Stevenson Dam was to, was well designed. The engineers were able to predict the maximum water runoff of this 243 square miles of land that feed into the reservoir. Since the dam was put into operation in January 1956, the water has reached the emergency spillway only once during Hurricane Agnes in 1972. So at this point, reading Kim, Kim's email, I'm losing my mind because for two things. One, the fact that it's actually reached that wa that that level before is just mind blowing. Like I literally can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine seeing that entire valley full of water. And since it's already happened once, obviously <laughs> the the engineers like Kimberly said did an excellent job predicting what it would take. Then the other thing I'm freaking out about is if this was that bad, why in the world do I know nothing about Hurricane Agnes in 1972? Because obviously it would take a catastrophic event to fill this entire valley that I was looking at, basically. So you guys are going to be getting a Hurricane Agnes episode sometime here in the future. But either way, I just thought this was a good example of A, how important it is to have you know quality engineering and and you know the best scientists working on these things because a layman like myself looking at the the construction would say oh that's that's obviously overkill that's obviously you know too much when in fact obviously wasn't i think this is a good example of why if you see something in nature or something especially at a park or whatever just ask uh there are uh, there are other wonderful people out there just like Kim who will take time out of their day and answer your questions. And lastly, I think this is a great example of how, of how whenever you're out there enjoying Pennsylvania and everything that has to offer, stop everywhere you see one of those blue signs. Stop everywhere you can. Check everything out because, because you never know what taking a little walk on something might spark and then you end up learning a whole lot. So either way, uh, thank you so much for listening. I want to thank Kimberly again from Cinema Honing State Park. And if you guys like what you hear, please don't forget to uh, rate and review on iTunes or whatever pod, whatever podcatcher you're listening on. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up on Facebook. And uh, thank you for listening. Have a good one. Take care.